This is a continuation of the GT5 Halcyon build series. This video is not sponsored nor is it affiliated with any product or company. To follow along head to elamscafeboutique.com There you'll find a whole bunch of plan packs that include schematics, layout diagrams and other high quality JPEGs. This video focuses on the resistors that are found in and around the tube socket. Of course you can use any resistors that you wish. There are a few brands that I prefer to use, in particular PRP. They have a nice color and long leads. Also I like Kawami for those higher wattage resistors. I also like Tacman carbon film resistors and I also have a number of vintage resistors that I'll use at some stage. In addition we'll be having a closer look at soldering or soldering for those Americanos out there and this is my main weapon of construction a good old Weller station that I bought for about 35 bucks at a second hand auction and she's made in good old Aussie mate it's ultra important to maintain a clean tip so always keep a wet sponge or some Goldilocks handy Getting the resistors into position and bending the leads can be a little bit tricky, so take your time. It always pays to have a few extra resistors, because believe me, you will need them. Notice at this stage that we are only putting into place plate and cathode resistors. All grid resistors will be attended to at a later stage and they will assume some kind of angle. And this is to reduce any unwanted coupling with the plate resistor. With soldering, keep in mind that the solder runs toward the heat so it is a good idea to place your iron tip behind your work. Then it is critically important to create a heat bridge by placing a little bit of solder on your tip. Then apply solder to the front of your work and you don't need as much as you think. Only apply enough to solidify the contact between the turret and the component lead. One needs to think ahead because there are going to be times when you need to provide protection for either components, leads or insulation. In these situations I cut up a fibre washer and this provides ideal separation.
I'm not going to solder into place uh, 17 because the grid pin is a little bit busy and so I'll leave that for a later time. There are going to be occasions when your soldering iron tip gets dangerously close to a component and one little touch can severely mount the casing, so extreme caution is needed. In this situation, use a barrier such as a piece of plastic or sheet metal. Caution is advised when soldering any component lead to the socket lug. You need very little solder and if you leave the soldering iron tip on the lug for too long, there is a possibility that you will melt the base. I do not wrap component leads around socket lugs there is no need and that is for ease of replacement. It is a complete nightmare if you ever have to remove a wrapped lead from a socket lug and believe me you will have to do it.
I soldered into place this resistor without checking its height, so I just levered it up a little bit with an ice block stick. That's all looking pretty good. Next stage we'll be lifting it all out of the jig and putting it into the chassis. Thanks for watching. See you next time.